Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. I'm getting ready to tie on a new warp. So I had made a set of tea towels, 15 yards of tea towels, and this is the old warp from those tea towels. And they, this warp is a, a cotton, so a blend of cotton and linen. It's still threaded through the heddles and tied on to the back beam back there. And I want to tie on a new warp because I want to do the exact same pattern in the same with the same set, but in different colors. So the first thing I did when I cut off the last project is I tied some knots in the warp so that this wouldn't uh, pull back through and out of all the heddles and and back. So the first thing I did is I knotted this and then these knots uh, kept the yarn from sliding back through. After I'd secured it that way, I took my shoelaces that are kind of attached to my loom at all times and I pulled it into position and I tied the back rods to the beater so that this back rod wouldn't weight down and yank through when I untied the knots here. So this isn't going to go anywhere even if I untie the knots. I use these shoelaces for a variety of things and I just kind of um, reposition them as I need them. They're always tied right here, but sometimes I tie them to here, sometimes I tie them to the beater um, when I'm slaying it, uh, that sort of thing. Then I wound my new warp in a series of chains. It's uh, stripes. So I wound some chains and uh, I drop them in the box as I finish winding them. There's a pile more of them here already. And I had fun with this uh, batch of warp chains. I did two at a time so that it winds quicker, but I blended the colors so that each bout has two different colors in it. So the wide stripes are all these warm orangey yellow colors and the narrow stripes are the blues. And as you can see, each bout has two colors in it. And I think that'll give it some depth and sparkle on the loom. Now the blue alternates with the with the oranges. Because I hadn't wound the blue yet, um, I started tying on and you know some of these blues are interspersed in here and they are over there. They're just not on my breast beam. So the way I do it is I tape my leaf sticks to the front beam and then I slide my uh, warp chains on. The, this loop is added on the warping board and that holds my cross loosely. So then I can slide the leaf sticks through the space that the yarn is holding. And then I'll cut this right now because the cross is being held by the leaf sticks. And then I just pick them uh, off the cross one or two at a time and bring them over and tie them on. Now this looks like a nest and a tangle, and but it isn't. I'll show you once there's tension on it, uh, it'll pull everything straight. I'll be using a yank and crank method of winding this on to the uh, warp beam. So the first thing I do is I pick the next two off my cross. Take it over here, find the next two, and I tie. You know, I use an overhand knot. There is a weaver's knot that is quick and easy for some people, and I have never been able to master it. The last time I tried it, it took me five minutes to make one knot. So, I am giving up and I just do an easy overhand knot 
and this is 8-2 cotton or cotton actually and I'm using an 11 dent reed the knots fit through the reed quite easily um, and through the heddles they don't hang up or anything so I'm not worried about um, the knots being too bulky at all and the benefit to tying on is I don't have to worry about threading mistakes I uh, it's all everything's already threaded through the heddles and through the reed everything is nicely ordered too because my color stripes um, will automatically line up in that when I run out of yarn on from my cross here at the end of the color then I'm at the end of the stripe here on the loom and if it's not then I know I've made a mistake somewhere And I'm just grabbing the two randomly. So sometimes the uh, white, the lighter color comes first and sometimes the darker one comes first. And it doesn't matter to me as I uh, tie on because I want it to end up random in the warp. So I don't want the necessarily always to be light, dark, light, dark as it works across. If it goes light, light, dark, once in a while, that's just fine by me. So all my work chains are tied on and this mess is not really a mess. Once we put it under tension, it should be fine. Uh, at this point, it can be wound on however, um, you know, you're more comfortable with it. I remove my lee sticks. For me, the lee sticks purpose and only purpose is to hold the cross when I'm threading. So once everything is threaded through the reed and the heddles, I have no use for my lee sticks. I can give this a good yank and we can take a look at what we've got. And we've got a good stripe sequence happening here. Yeah, that looks good. So at this point, uh, whatever tension or yank and crank is usually done. Uh, can be done. I can undo this because I'm now happy to let the bar at the back put some weight on the warp. And I can start pulling it through the reed. I ease it through at the beginning, ease it through the reed and the heddles, and then it's uh, smooth sailing as far as the, the winding on goes. It's always nice to see it work out the way um, it was in my mind. <laughs> the warp chains are all in a bucket here on the floor behind my bench. I tend to do a, a yank and crank, but uh, having a, a friend turn the, the handle while I hold the um, warp under tension also works really well. One day I'll build a trapeze that will help me wind on.
just wrapping the apron around and now I'm easing the knots through the heddles. They seem to be coming through quite nicely on their own. There we go. And we can see how it looks at the back beam. This is the row of knots as we go from the old warp to the new. And at this point, some good tugging and or tension at the front while this gets wound onto the back. And so on. A big thank you to my patrons whose support helps me to keep creating these videos. If you have found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. Links to my Patreon, website, and store are below. Thank you for watching.